So I've bought myself a Ring Pro. Um, firstly, I'm in the UK and uh, I bought this Ring Pro. Uh, it arrived today. I had a look around online uh, on YouTube and whatnot for the last couple of days and I couldn't find any UK specific videos demonstrating how to install this. There are a few on the Ring doorbell, the ordinary Ring, but not the Pro. Um, and there is a difference. And the reason there's a difference is because the Ring Pro requires a constant power source of 16 volt or greater. Um, and that in itself is a problem with the UK doorbell or the legacy doorbells that this is designed to replace. So because I couldn't find it, I've muddled my way through it today and you'll see the uh, efforts I put in in the next uh, few minutes. But certainly what I want to do is just give you a quick look at the box. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to do an unboxing video. There are plenty of those online. Um, but really, you've got your face plates inside, you've got the ring itself. Um, and there's more importantly, the one major component is the Ring Pro Transformer. And those of you in other regions probably won't have this, but certainly in the UK and I think Europe as well, you will need this transformer. Uh, slightly more complicated and installed than it is abroad. And the reason that it's slightly more complicated is uh, because you have to start playing around with high voltage electricity and as a result Ring and Amazon where I bought this device from suggests that you should probably consult a licensed or um, certainly qualified electrician before you even try to install this yourself. Um, that said I'd say most people should probably just leave it to an expert. I'm fairly competent, I'm not licensed or qualified but the reason I've gone ahead with the install is because I feel that my circumstances are slightly different, which means that I can afford to uh, um, put this together myself without in, impinging on any uh, laws or any uh, safety concerns. So anyway, what follows is uh, the next few minutes worth of, of installation of the video, and I'm trying to articulate how I'm doing it and some of the pitfalls and how I've overcome those. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to give you a little bit of a roundup as to what I think about the Ring Pro doorbell um, and my experiences. Okay, so this is what we're starting with. This is the old mains powered doorbell. Uh, when I say mains powered, I mean this is what comes uh, from the transformer, which is located next to the consumer unit in my study on the downstairs. Um, it's a free land, it operates at around, what does it say on there, eight volts, I think it says, um, or six volts actually. Uh, the transformer is an eight volt transformer. Uh, this is really common in the UK. We have these all over the place. Um, and if I show you the top of the box, People in the UK will recognise this, uh, it's very, very common indeed. Um, obviously the battery sections in it are for a backup, I'm assuming, a battery backup. Uh, that doesn't affect us. So what we're going to do is install the transformer in the study uh, next to the consumer unit, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, and then what we're going to do is use the included power bypass that comes with the Ring Pro, which also has a little fuse coupling on it as well just to connect the two power cables together and basically disconnect this old chime. That's what we're doing, just using this as a sort of a junction box in the hall. Ultimately, I will probably replace this in the long term, um, make it a little bit more elegant, but for now it'll do, um, and it's all neatly packed out of the way. And anybody that came in to work on this in the future would pretty much understand how it was, um, how it was all wired up. One of those cables goes to the push switch, the bell switch on the outside of the front door, and the other one comes from the transformer for the power, as you can see. So it's those two cables on the left there that we're going to connect together via the fuse kit that comes with the Ring Pro. Okay, so next step, transformer in the study. So this, quite simply, is the fuse box or MCV unit. Uh, in the downstairs study of my house. Uh, next to it, as you can see, is the doorbell transformer. It's a Freeland transformer, um, but it doesn't require, uh, it doesn't give out the required uh, power output to support the Ring Pro, so uh, that needs to be changed for the one that came in the box, basically. I thought this was actually recessed into the wall. In the UK, we have a block wall with um, what we call dot and dab, which is basically plasterboard. Um, with a sort of a recess or a gap behind, which is held away from the, the, the block wall. And I thought that was mounted on the block wall with the front face folk uh, sticking through the plasterboard. Actually, um, I think actually it's called sheetrock in America, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so actually now I've looked at it, if I, and I've already turned the power off, so don't worry, but if I take the uh, covers off, 
you can see it's actually the transformers just screwed onto the the face of the plasterboard which will make changing it a lot easier because i expected those wires to be deeply embedded into the wall um and again in the consumer unit this is what it looks like um there's no more room for the ring pro transformer that comes in they come on a uh it comes in a format that's designed to to fit on a din rail inside this unit um, unfortunately as you can see i'm completely maxed out so i have no more room so i am actually going to have to put it up there rather than change the whole consumer unit and this is actually bedded into the wall as you can see uh, it goes back in quite some way so that changing that wouldn't be easy certainly not something i'm going to do for a doorbell so um yeah that that's just going to be changed basically um i've already got the power off i've just established that my existing mains wire doorbell is on the downstairs lighting ring i'm not quite sure why but it is um that was when the house was built 20 years ago so i've switched that off and i've just labeled it so that i know for future reference um yeah, so now I'm going to get to getting that doorbell off. I hope there's enough slack in the cable and then I'm going to have to try and find some way to attach the new transformer to the wall or in a new cabinet, which I may have to buy. Um, but we'll see and I'll uh, see what the stores offer to try and accommodate that and uh, see where we go next. OK, so here's my existing uh, bell push. Uh, I moved it there recently, actually. It used to be on the side of the door frame uh, around about here. But uh, I had a new front door fitted, as you can see, and so I decided it would look better if it was placed over onto the brickwork. And I also did that thinking that I may upgrade to ring in the near future. So I literally just drilled a diagonal hole behind the brickwork when the door was off uh, and created a little channel for the cable. And now I've done that, I now have the cable behind the push switch, uh, which obviously now is currently not working because I disconnected it all. But uh, I'm about to take that off, uh, ready for the ring to go there. Okay, so you can see what I've done there. Um, really straightforward. These little um, clip connectors are, again, are quite new. Um, I quite like them actually. I use them on other sort of DIY projects. But uh, Ring very kindly include two of these in the package. So you can see there that the power comes in and that's just looped straight back out again on that first terminal. That was already in place on the, on the doorbell before. Uh, and all I've done is include the two connectors, taken them away from the two um, power terminals on the doorbell, the existing doorbell, and I've put them straight into the um, connectors that Ring provide. And as you can see, that red cable then holds a little fuse holder, um, which has a, a little bit of extra protection built in there. And again, that's all provided by Ring, which is quite nice. So obviously I've just connected that up just to show you, but ideally I'm now gonna pack that away neatly into the doorbell and put the face back on. And um, that is essentially just one rather very large slightly unattractive um, connection box now, junction box, but um, it'll do for the time being, as I was saying. Okay, right, let's uh, power this up and see where it goes. Okay, so here's what we've ended up with. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, there's the ring transformer on the right-hand side. Uh, that is meant to be connected onto the DIN rail of your existing uh, consumer unit, we call them in the UK. Um, it's where all your uh, circuit breakers are. Um, ultimately, there isn't room in mine, so I had to find a neat solution that kept it safe and out of the way. So what I've done is I've just popped down to my local DIY store and I've picked up this £30, um, £30 sterling that is, I'm not sure what that translates to in other currencies. Um, it's called a garage consumer unit, it's designed to go in the garage. Um, it's effectively overkill for what I'm trying to achieve, but all I wanted was a DIN rail to hang the ring transformer on and a way of safely connecting it up. But what I've actually ended up with is an RCD protected doorbell which is absolutely um, unnecessary but I suppose it's better than having the transformer loosely flailing around on the side of the uh, wall there. So what I've done is literally screw the box to the wall, pulled the existing power cable through for the transformer, as you can see that's the black and red cables, um, they go into the top of the um, main RCD unit there that comes with the garage power supply. Uh, there's an already installed factory default uh, neutral which comes out and back up to the um, connector bar at the top and all I've done is take a very uh, well, fairly small two and a half mil uh, neutral line straight down into the bottom of the ring transformer. Um, doesn't matter which way around they go I'm told uh, and then I've took a, a live connection um, straight out of the bottom of the RCD unit, there you go, and straight across into the bottom of the ring transformer. 
And then in the Ring Transformer, uh, we've got two connections. One in four is what Ring Pro requires. Um, my existing bell cables that came out of the wall, those two little thin white cables, weren't quite long enough. So I've had to use a couple of the uh, clip connectors, very similar to what Ring provide in the box actually. Um, and then I've just used two small pieces of wire just to extend the length of those cables to get them into the top of the uh, Ring Transformer. As far as I'm aware, um, this is, you know, perfectly safe, uh, no reason why this would be any problem. As I said, it's slightly overkill, I think, for what's actually required. And if you had space in your consumer unit, then uh, this wouldn't be a problem for you. You wouldn't have any need to, uh, to have that on the wall as well. But I plan to change the consumer unit in the future. I won't be doing that. And the reason that I went ahead with this particular job is because um, in the UK, at least, a licensed or qualified electrician needs to work on the consumer unit. Because my cable was already in the wall for the old doorbell, I haven't touched the consumer unit, so um, perfectly safe working within my realms of, uh, of understanding and capability. So yeah, there we go. That's the neat-ish finish to the uh, power supply. And I've already run a multimeter across the terminals that are outside just to demonstrate that they are, um, the transformer is delivering the voltage in the required range. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, take a look at that now. Right, so this is going to be quite noisy because I'm outdoors and I'm next to a road, but um, you can see I've already attached uh, one probe of my multimeter to one end of the cable. Um, I've got the multimeter set to 200 volts AC um, and that, uh, that will do the trick quite nicely. DC will be the V on the other side of the multimeter, but uh, there are plenty of videos online on how to use a multimeter. Again, excuse the noise, I am outside and I am next to a road. So um, if I grab the other probe, and put it across the other terminal and then look back at the multimeter we're getting 31.2 ish volts out of that um, so that's good that means we've got power where we want it that's the main thing um, that's a little bit more power than I was expecting actually um, I would have expected it to be more around the 24 um, but it's ring zone transformer so who am I to question it hopefully the device can cater for the slight increase over and above the 24 that they say it supports but um, anyway next job is to fit the back plate and uh, the actual ring doorbell to the wall there okay and just to give you a quick look at the finished article so that's what it looks like on the wall it's not a bad looking unit i suppose as far as uh, these things go uh, lift the flap and there's the uh, ring transformer and the rcd that goes with it it's all powered up, it's all switched on uh, and it's working. So there's that part of the installation. And again, if I back out slightly, you can see it sort of pales into insignificance in the room. So I'm fairly happy with that. Could have been worse. So yeah, not bad. And I'll show you the doorbell in the hall. I spin round and you can see that's what we're left with, which is basically just a junction box. So nothing more exciting than that. I will eventually move that, I think, one day, remove it completely and tuck the join into the wall, but we'll see how that goes. And finally, here's the finished doorbell. So I didn't video putting the doorbell on the wall because the ring manual does a pretty good job of explaining that. I had power at the cable, so I've literally just fixed the thing to the wall and pushed the, uh, pushed the uh, face plate over the front. So quite happy with how it looks. It's, um sits quite nicely against the door. If I come back out slightly, again, excuse the noise, I'm next to a road as you can see and uh, and it all works as expected which is nice I'll press the button there we go and I've just had a notification on my phone which you can't actually see so. okay so now that you've seen how I've installed my ring pro I just wanted to show you what's left over afterwards um, and really just give you my thoughts on the installation process and indeed on the on the doorbell itself um, firstly, I'm pretty impressed actually. Um, it's a lot more robust a device for its application anyway than I thought it was going to be. I knew, I'd read online that it was going to be a little bit flaky potentially, a little bit buggy. I'm not saying that's acceptable, but I'm just saying that's what I'd read. Um, for me certainly, it has been a little bit buggy installing it, um, but I don't think it's anything that you couldn't overcome. Um, if you expect to un uh, unpack it, connect it up and not experience any deviations from what it says in the book or indeed overcome any obstacles then you're probably not expecting um, you're probably not going to get what you're expecting but that said it certainly hasn't been a difficult experience and, and actually um, for anybody who's reasonably competent uh, I'd say it's fairly straightforward 
And to be fair, Ring do say that this Ring Pro model really should be installed by a qualified electrician. So with that in mind, I must admit, I think, um, I think that's probably what you'd encourage most people to do. Um, what I can see here is what comes in the box. There's your uh, three setup guides, paper-based guides. They're okay, they're not terribly detailed. This one we have in the UK. Um, you probably won't have it in other regions, maybe somewhere in Europe. Um, and it gives you a step-by-step -step on how the transformer should be included into your um, con consumer unit, which is, as you've already seen earlier on in the video, I have done. Um, but to be honest with you, this was fraught with a little bit of difficulty. Um, if you don't have space in your consumer unit, you need to do something about that. It would have been easier to have a standalone wall-mounted transformer, I think. I don't know why they don't offer that as an option. Certainly saves, uh, may, may not save so much wall space, but it certainly saves a lot of hassle on the uh, homeowner's part anyway. Um, I'm left behind with this, this uh, backing plate, which I didn't need to go from the old Ring doorbell to the Ring Pro. Uh, personally, I didn't use that, so it's still left over. There are a couple of connectors that I didn't use there, um, and I've got some um, European, um, and I think that's uh, uh, European and um, US and Canada, I think, um, connector for the Ring Chime that comes with the Ring Pro. I've also got some screws left over. Um, it's all very nicely labelled. You get too many screws for what you need, which I suppose is the nice thing, but it does make you think maybe you missed something. But on the whole, I didn't use the wall anchors, and you only need two screws to mount the Ring Pro to the wall. So. For me, certainly, that just wasn't uh, wasn't necessary to use all of those. So I've got those left over as well. And then in the box, I've got the three face plates that I didn't use. I chose the black option, but there's the black brown, the matte uh, silver color, and then there's a silver whitish color. I wouldn't say it was completely white, maybe an off white, but um, but yeah. So that's the bits and pieces that I've got left over. Um, my thoughts on the product, as I said earlier on, is it's, it was a really good piece of kit. I've got 30 days to change my mind, and and I'm going to keep it because. I do think it works and it does work really well. Um, some of the issues I've had on setup, after I powered the device up, it did take a fair while to connect to the wireless. Now I have really good wireless in this house. Um, so that's the other thing I should probably mention. I'm on a fiber connection in the UK, which means I get something like 60 meg consistently down, 60 megabit down speed on my internet and about 15 to 16 meg up fairly consistently. So I, I don't think we can suggest I've got poor internet performance, there are better, but on the whole, it's certainly better than the one meg that Ring recommend. And I did a speed test using the app at the door where this is cited, um, and it confirmed those speeds. So I have no issues with internet performance and certainly no issues with latency either. I also have a really good wireless setup in this house. I use Ubiquiti um, Unify wireless access points, and I've got three of them, and I've got a really good mesh coverage of the entire house. So. Wi-Fi performance here and internet connectivity shouldn't be an issue and to be fair they haven't been. That said the the device did take a while to initially connect. The Ring Chime that comes with the Ring Pro is standard. Um, that did take quite a long time to connect and I don't know why because it was quite near an access point. Also um, when you submit any changes to the Ring Chime like the Chime itself you can do a ding dong or you can make the sound of dogs barking or whatever the, the app lets you configure it takes ages for it to update. I'm saying probably getting on for 40, 50 seconds for the app to signal that the chime has the um, sound updated so that it can play next time somebody plays the presses the door button, the doorbell. And that seems to be fairly consistent. I don't know why the chime takes so long to update, but how often am I gonna change the noise of the chime? Very infrequently, so it really doesn't bother me. The app has crashed on me once. I've probably tested the doorbell about, I don't know, 30 times maybe, um, and I've ended up with the app crashing just once. So I wouldn't want it to crash at all really, but ideally I suppose that's not too bad a failure rate. Um, other than that, the as soon as I press the door button, the phone, my phone, which is also on wireless, and even when I switched wireless off, it, I get the notification that there's somebody at my door very, very quickly. It's milliseconds, it must be. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the performance so far. Video quality is really good. Um, I really, really think that the video quality is, is very good um, to the phone. Um, I can zoom in if I choose. Uh, the motion detection seems to work really well. Everything pretty much does what it says on the tin. The app has been a little bit buggy, I suppose. Um, 
just in terms of it flicks between screens very slowly. When you're putting in the access point um, Wi-Fi password, it takes, well, pressing the keys on the keyboard, I end up backspacing and then typing again before the screen has caught up with what I'm typing. So there's something lagging in the app and I don't know what it is, but other than that, it's, it's been reasonably okay. Um, my main gripe, and I didn't put this earlier in the video because I was too busy trying to sort it out rather than actually take any footage of it, but my main gripe is the fact that with the ring transformer, you get a little, this piece of cable here, which effectively goes in your existing doorbell to bypass the power feed so that it doesn't power the old doorbell, because of course with the Ring Pro you sacrifice your existing doorbell. Um, I have no problem with that and I use this just to, just to bypass the power. In that little black holder um, is a fuse, a small one amp fuse. Um, in the case of the one that I received it was faulty and it took me a long time, I mean probably two hours, to try and understand why this why my cabling wasn't working. Um, before I even connected the ring doorbell and before I'd even powered up the transformer, I did a connectivity test with a multimeter just to see if the cable run was uninterrupted, whether I had any problems. And I could not find where the break, as I thought it was, in the cable actually was, but it wasn't a break at all. The fuse that was in that fuse holder was already faulty. Um, that's annoying. So I had to go down to uh, a local electronics store. Uh, it's called Maplin in the UK, and they sold me a bag of 10 fuses for £2.99, I think, um, to replace that fuse. And that's been fine, and it's now working absolutely fine. But it did give me a lot of head scratching because I assumed it was something that was wrong with the transformer rather than a, a, a fuse that had already gone. And as I said, I hadn't even powered up the power at this time. So it's not like I could have blown the fuse by doing something wrong. It just it just, it, I assume it was faulty. And don't get me wrong, again, accidents happen, manufacturing toler tolerances, whatever, um, but it's just unfortunate that I should end up with a duff fuse in my, in my set. But other than that, that's my initial thoughts, really. I'm gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna, obviously, it'll be used as and when people come to the door. Um, I've also got the motion detection set up, uh, which looks really slick um, around the front door area, just to see um, how much it catches when somebody doesn't come to the door but walks past the door. Um, this driveway that you can see out here actually is a shared driveway off of the road down to two other properties as well. So I've drawn the zone close to the house but it'd be interesting to see how much of the passing uh, my neighbour's cars that pass it picks up. But other than that, um, yeah, we're just going to have to see how it goes. And, and yeah, generally speaking, really impressed with the product. Thoroughly recommend it. But as I will say, if you're in the UK, I suggest you get a, a licensed electrician to help you out, unless you're really handy. Um, and by that, I mean you already have power away from your consumer unit, because I'm not advocating anybody go anywhere near their consumer unit, because um, I'm pretty sure it's actually illegal, but more importantly than that, you know, there's a, a real risk of safety there. But um, if you've already got power in place elsewhere, or you come up with a solution like I did and use power from another source and then install a, a, a little um, consumer unit with a DIN rail in it, then that's a, a perfectly good option. Can't see any reason why that wouldn't be, wouldn't be suitable. But I um, hope you found this video useful. And just as a reminder, I only recorded it because I couldn't find anything UK based um, regarding the installation of this transformer. And again, that's probably because it's designed for the Pro but actually um, it's relatively straightforward as long as you've got your wits about you, you understand what you're doing and you're working safely at all times. So yeah, wish you luck and I um, hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. Cheers, bye-bye.